the spate of child trafficking in society has become a source of great concern to many. Hardly does any month pass by without one hearing the ugly incident of missing or trafficked children, making especially parents worried about the dangerous trend and the fate of the affected children. Benue State is not spared of this unfortunate development as children are reportedly sold and trafficked to most parts of the country on the pretext of adoption or to serve as house helps, farm assistants, amongst others. Research show that um, although Benue State Government has domesticated the Child Rights Act and set up an anti-human trafficking task force to complement the efforts of the National Agency for the Prohibition of Trafficking in Persons, NAPTIP, child trafficking is still on the increase in most rural communities and is being fueled by the constant displacement of families in affected communities due to the persistent face-off between farmers and headers. The recent clampdown on a child trafficking syndicate in Benue State, targeting vulnerable homes including IDP camps, posing as sponsors of education is a testimony to the fact that the criminal act has remained unabated. Are most parents and victims aware of the implications of this trend? What are the immediate and remote causes and how can this illicit business be stamped out? These and more will be our focus on Panorama today, coming to you live from the Makudi Network Center. First, the news of the day. I am Susan Omale. President Bola Tinubu has arrived in Doha for a state visit to the Qatar. The 001 presidential air fleet landed at the Doha International Airport at about 11.30 p.m. local time, 9.30 p.m. Nigerian time. The state visit to Qatar is to honor the invitation of Sheikh Tamim bin Hamid Al Thani, Emir of the state of Qatar. In an earlier statement by the presidential spokesman, Anjuri Ngelali stated that the visit is to further strengthen cooperation between the two nations in several areas, including security, cultural exchange, and economic development. President Bola Tinubu has called on Nigerians to keep alive in his administration's goal of delivering set vision and aspirations for the good of all. The president said this while inaugurating the Red Line Rail in Lagos. Lanre Balei reports that the president also signed the formal agreement to commence the second phase of the project. While reaffirming his administration's commitment to the ongoing economic reforms in the country, President Paul Tinubu believes the project is a product of aggressive infrastructural upgrade aimed at fast-tracking development agenda and simplify the process of committing for both personal and business purposes. True change is possible. I speak to Nigerians through this podium that change is possible and change we must achieve. Progress we must achieve. In order for single individual, it's about the highest great population in the world. Out of every five individual black colored people, is a Nigerian. Governor of Lagos State, Papajide Sanwolu, described the rail service as the manifestation of a 20-year vision which was conceived by the president when he was governor of Lagos State. 20 years ago, you breathed that vision. But today, as our president, you are here to see that vision come to reality. We want to thank God for your life. We want to know you to know that it's been a tough nine months but we are convinced because we know of what you are made of we know what capacity what capability you are made of there was a meeting ride to mark the inauguration of the rail system with the president of board alongside governors and other top government functionaries 
The 27-kilometer Lagos Red Rail Line system, Lagos State Government says, will be able to convey 500,000 passengers daily when it's fully operational. In Lagos, Larry Ilayi, NT News. The House of Representatives is urging President Bola Ahmad Tinubu to carry out a comprehensive review of the 2012 Oronshaye panel report on restructuring of government parastatals before implementation. Adopting a motion of urgent public importance by Representative Kama Mkim Kama and two other lawmakers, the House expressed concern that full implementation of a report 12 years after may not reflect the current situation in the public service of the Federation. National Assembly correspondent Mitari Ikbin reports that deliberations on Thursday's plenary. Reactions continue to trail the Tinubu administration's decision to reduce the cost of governance by implementing the Steve Oron Sayer panel report, which recommended restructuring of federal agencies and parastate house. In the Green Chamber, lawmakers voted for a thorough review of the decision, expressing concern over unintended consequences during implementation. The full implementation of the report will not substantially, substantially reduce the cost of governance as it does not repair the current situation in the public service of the Federation. An ad hoc committee headed by House leader Julius Inhongwiri was constituted to advise on appropriate steps. To examine the recommendation by the executive on the restructuring of federal agencies and commissions, recommend legislation to accommodate the proposals, liaise with the affected agencies and commissions on all issues related to the proposed reforms, recommend legislative measures to mitigate possible fallouts of the reforms, advise the House on issues related to smooth implementation and related matters. The House adopted another motion requesting the Joint Admission and Matriculations Board, JAM, to extend the deadline for UTME registration by two weeks. We are all aware of the painful economic situation prevailing in the country. As a result, many families have been constrained from registering their awards by timeline. A bill for an act to amend the Niger Delta Development Commission Act to provide for the inclusion of Anambra State as an oil producing state scaled second reading. Leading the debate, House Deputy Minority Whip George Uzodinobi observed that Anambra State has been receiving 13% derivation from the federal government being an oil producing state, but is yet to be enlisted in the Niger Delta Development Commission Act. From the National Assembly, Mitaire. Iqben, NTA News. State government has inaugurated two judicial commissions of inquiry on incomes and expenditures and that of sale and lease of public assets in the state. Governor Hassan's Alia, who performs the inauguration ceremony, charged members of the commissions to exhibit diligence in the discharge of their responsibilities. Elias Sitiab reports. Members of the two Judicial Commissions of Inquiry on Incomes and Expenditures of Benue State Government from May 29, 2015 to May 28, 2023, and that of sale or lease of government assets, companies including those maribond and markets from or before May 28, 2015 to May 28, 2023, taking their oaths of allegiance and office. Governor Hyacinth earlier, while inaugurating the commissions, noted that the move became necessary in response to the desire of people of the state who are owners of the state's resources. The governor therefore urged members of the commissions to discharge their duties with diligence and dedication in accordance with the principles of public service, bearing in mind that their choice is born out of their track records. Identify all the Benue State Bank accounts and examine the propriety or otherwise of the transactions in the accounts from 29th day of May 2015 to the 20th day of May 2023. D. To identify loans taken by a Benue State government from 29th May 2015 to 20th May 2023 and ascertain the appropriateness of the utilization, interest charge on the loans, and the possible abuse thereof. In their separate responses, chairmen of the two commissions pledged to work in line with the terms of reference given to them. The Judicial Commissions of Inquiry 
which have six months to submit their reports, have been separately tasked to, among other things, look into the bailout funds and its implementation, Paris club reforms, loans procured by the state government, functional and moribund companies, as well as markets, and make recommendations. In Makuri, Elias, ETF, NTN News. We'll be right back after... Watching Panorama from NTA Makudi. In line with government's commitment to ensure that adolescent girl child education is achieved, the federal government's program, Adolescent Girls Initiative for Learning and Empowerment, Agile, has kicked off in Nasarawa State. Saada to Awalu Saliu reports that the campaign commenced with a stakeholders' engagement. Year 22. It is a federal ministry of education initiative that is supported by the World Bank and is aimed of ensuring improved secondary school education of the girl child in the country. The successes recorded in the project led to the addition of the 11 more states, including Nasrawa, Adamawa, Bauchi, Kwara, Kogi State, Sokoto, among others. As Nasarawa State is set to commence the project for the period of five years, the Commissioner for Education, John Momman, highlights some of the effort made by the state towards implementing this program. For the Adolescent Girl Project and its sub-project activities in Nasarawa State, there is a need to open an inclusive engagement dialogue with stakeholders. The project supervisors and other speakers highlight challenges faced by the girl child as well as reasons for engaging stakeholders and civil society as one of the key ways to success through monitoring and supervision. Implementation of the activities and the implementation of the activities. This is to reduce the possibility of conflicts. Is that the agile program intends to want to or give us all the skills out of school back to school? The event created opportunity for interactions among participants. The program targeted covering adolescent girls between the ages of 10 to 20 and out-of-school girls who are married or have disabilities. Ilafia Sadat Awalisaliu, NTA News. There has been an upsurge in human trafficking in Benue State, with arrests made by relevant authorities in different locations in the state. Blessing Omecha Ibuti in this report x-rays the manage of human trafficking, factors responsible, and efforts towards curtailing it. Human trafficking identified as a form of modern-day slavery is an issue that affects individuals globally. In Nigeria, this inhuman practice has taken shocking dimension with devastating consequences as it targets vulnerable groups, especially women and children. Benue State has had its own fair share of human trafficking trend as perpetrators of the act take advantage of the insecurity vis-à-vis -vis the condition of displaced persons among others to carry out their activities. There may be some uh, records of uh, trafficking of, of particular children, both the most vulnerable children in the camp. That was then. That was when the camps were not organized. Like most of these camps were left on their own. But now government has taken ownership of all the camp in Burma State. Despite efforts by relevant authorities to reduce the trend, it has remained unabated as population boom, unemployment and economic hardship are but a few factors fueling the menace. Taptip and the Ministry of Women Affairs and Social Development will need to increase awareness along these uh, two legislations for, so that those who are perpetrating it will know that the law has prohibited it. The National Agency for the Prohibition of Trafficking in Persons, NAPTIP, has been on the forefront in the fight against human trafficking, recording significant achievements in the state. Well, the strategy we use is, is a, it's a national strategy that NAPTIP has been able to map up for, for counter-trafficking activities. What has to do with, we talk of the five pieces, the policy, prevention, protection, prosecution, and partnership. So under these five Ps, when it comes to uh, prevention, we do a lot of awareness creation. Um, we have been to the IDP camps and we, we carry out awareness creations. We have been we are on the radio, on the TV, 
uh, we are in schools. Stakeholders call for a multidimensional approach and interagency collaboration in tackling human trafficking to a standstill. In Makudi, Blessing Omeche Ebute, NTA News. To throw more light on this, I'm being joined in the studio by Tokwasi Kate Yaji. She is the head public enlightenment, NAPTI, Benue State, Makudi Zonal Command. Thank you so much for joining us on Panorama today. Thank you. I'm most delighted to be here. Good afternoon, viewers. All right. Now let's begin from the basics. What is human trafficking? Oh, well, for us, human trafficking is the exploitation of human beings for, the, for various purposes. Okay. Now what are we talking about? What are the various purposes that people would want to exploit another person? When we say various purposes, we are t actually talking about forms of trafficking. Okay. People exploit peop uh, other human beings for the purpose of uh, labor exploitation. We have sexual exploitation. We have trafficking for organ harvesting. We have hmm. trafficking for baby factory, uh, uh, baby sales, and the rest. Well, from your research findings, what are the methods of operation of these criminals? in the state. The key word there, tra what traffickers use mostly is deception. Traffickers don't just come and tell you that, ah, let's go, I have something for you. They must have a story attached to it and have a promise given to that particular story that they are attaching to you. Okay. Yes. Now, what are the factors responsible for this increase? You know, recently there is this sudden surge. What are the factors responsible? Oh, there are various factors attached to this particular issue. But first of all, let's look at the issue of ignorance. So most people are not aware. Sometimes when I go for sensitization, people are really ask that, oh, these things, are they actually happening? Or some of them even come out that, oh, I didn't know that this is a crime because I have taken my children to this. I've taken my child to this place for, for, for caregiving and all that. So I usually ask them, what is wrong with you that you, you have to give your child out for someone else to take care of? your child mm -hmm. so what are other factors that could be uh, you know to, could make anyone want to do that oh the economic factor is there. In yes for the being we would look at the displaced person uh, uh, factor where a lot of people are being displaced and uh, like you rightly said earlier mm -hmm. on that we have the issue of trafficking in the idp camps and uh, there is no day that naptip wake up that they will don't go for arrest in the idp camp and uh, that is one of the f another factor that is um, I that trafficking is in the increase in benue state today okay now in the law the, it's it's uh, it says uh, ignorance is no excuse now we are here to you know inform the people what are the implications of this oh well for trafficking there are a lot of things involved in trafficking for 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 the individual it give you it, it, it does the, the individual is traumatized for the parents the parents who are traumatized and then for the society it is a threat to national security because we have when we have crisis, we have people recruiting these children for child soldiering, and it is a tr it is a threat to national security. So it is it, it, it is a collective effort that all hands must be on deck that this issue of trafficking must be curbed or eradicated to, at all levels. Now I'm talking about uh, collaboration. Now, what's that level of collaboration with? other you know security agencies or is we, it a loan project no uh, um you will you could see in our reports that the the five piece strategy is not to be using one of which is partnership there's no way the issue of trafficking can be can be can be carried without partners partners we partner with law enforcement agency even the media are one of our partners if you don't carry these messages people will know that yes there's a crisis in the state which is called trafficking. And what are the penalties? You know? Oh, there are a lot of penalties. For, but our own mandate is to give justice to the victim. So the traffickers are in prison. The traffickers are, 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 are taken to court for jurisdiction. 
Okay. Now, I would want you to just maybe elaborate a little more on this jurisdiction you are talking about. The people need to know, am I going to be jailed? Am I, what, how, you know, how many years am I going to serve if I am found guilty of this? Um, for NAPTIP, yeah, we have various, um, various jail terms for each, each, each of the forms of trafficking. But I won't be mentioning it here, but it, it, it's there. During our awareness, we'll definitely elaborate on that. We have various jail terms for various trafficking, and it's, 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 it's the general public should know that, yes, we, we lock up these traffickers, we, the, the victims get ju justice. Okay, in Benue State, what has, what's the outcome so far of this uh, collaboration? Collaboration with law enforcement agencies, yes, mm. we collaborate a lot with law enforcement as, agencies such as and the DSS, we collaborate with the uh, civil defense, we collaborate with the Nigerian police, of course the military and other law enforcement agencies around. Thank you so much for coming on Panorama today. What are your parting words to that person out there watching us? Oh, for you watching us here, uh, when you see something, say something, call us on star 627 hash. Our office, Naptip Makodi Zonal Command, is located at number 5, plot 1522 Victor Maluk Road, New Jerry, Bainway State. Thank you so much. Thank you. And for us there, when you see something, make sure you say something. Thank you for coming to give us your own thoughts on the program today. Thank you for having me. All right. Moving ahead, next on our lineup is Sports Update with Olumide Ogun.